ladies and gentlemen, to this fine radio program, this uh, program being uh, Smoking and Toasting. It is the show that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. We are brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. B&B also uh, proud, uh, proud sponsors, owners, I guess, uh, managers, proprietors. Of BB Lemon, which is right across the street mm-hmm. from the Houston location, and BB Italiano, which is uh, downtown Houston. I haven't been to that one yet, but no, I have to, I have we to gotta, make that. We got to go check that bad boy out. I have to make that <coughs> trip. That's going to be a good thing. Well, welcome to the show. It's number 100 and wait, 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 39. They haven't stopped us oh, yet? Oh, see, I knew you were going to go there. You and your repetitious thing that you do that gets us in trouble from the commenters. I think, you know, honestly, I think repetition is good just due to the fact that, you know, Mm-hmm. People get, ex- you know, they expect things and and we give them what they expect. It's kind of like if you went to see, and I'm making this up, Jimmy Buffett, right? <laughs> and he didn't do Margaritaville. Somebody goes to see Jimmy Buffett because he makes more money than I do. Well, yeah. and, and can, <laughs> But can you imagine, like, you pay all that money to go and then he didn't do Margaritaville? And I'm sure he's sick to death of it by now. Right. He's probably played that song before. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, a time or two, you got to do what you got to do. Jimmy knows that he's a he's a smart man. He's a good businessman. Uh, so welcome to the show. We are very glad to have you here. We are um, uh, show number one hundred thirty nine, and we are wow, wow, okay, good. Uh, we are talking today about uh, AI crafted whiskey and the fifteen best tequilas you can buy right now. But we're talking about more than that, actually, uh, Ian, because there's huge. Huge world uh, news from the world of craft beer. Huge, and I'm not, it's not a did, joke. Like, did I see a teaser up. about this on our page? Yeah, here. you may have. You may have. Uh, two of the most prominent craft brewers uh, out there have merged: Dogfish Head and Boston Beer Company, which is Sam That's Adams Beer. Crazy. And I so, love Dogfish Head, and I have absolute respect for uh, Boston for, Beer. For Sam Adams and Boston absolute. Beer. Well, it's an interesting absolute. thing. I, I think what you're seeing uh, in, in many, many ways is is the beer companies, um, the craft beer companies, and these are two, I mean, very big, very respectable mm-hmm. as far as craft goes. I think Sam Adams, uh, Boston Beer, is the number one... Or number two, craft beer brewer in the world. I think it depends on whether you count uh, AB as being craft or not with their craftish beers. If you don't count them, certainly not Adams, indie beer. Yeah, certainly Sam Adams is number one. So if you if you take them as number one, I think Dogfish Head is is top fifteen. Um, that's a pretty big deal. So it's it's interesting because those two companies are absolute innovators mm-hmm. in uh, the craft beer world. Uh, Sam Adams for being uh, the one of the one of the biggest companies to bring craft beer back. Right, like that's huge. They really really pushed that whole market and brought it into a whole new. Uh, a place where they didn't they didn't have a market before that. Well, and I they think they created yeah, that. I think they match up well too because I think of Sam Adams, even though they have some very good and very interesting and revolutionary new brews, but you think of them primarily as the company that has you know maybe one of the easiest to find, one of the best marketed uh, and certainly delicious craft beers yeah. out there, which is the Sam Adams Boston Lager. You can find that almost anywhere, uh, and they've done a great job of being. As ubiquitous as the big beer companies, mm-hmm. and then you got Dogfish Head, which is known for outrageous, just the crazy innovation yeah. stuff that they do. And yeah. what's what what I, one of the reasons Dogfish Head has been one of my favorites for the over the years is they're just not afraid to try stuff. They're yeah. so crazy. They're they like, really what are. if we do this and then they do it? In fact, as our kind of show beer, we sometimes will open a beer just before the show that's not one of the ones that we're reviewing, but just you know, yes. And one, we have this this enjoy. particular beer we have reviewed, yeah, before. and we have reviewed it before. And I'll put it on the beer cam and. Ian, maybe you can turn the beer cam on. We don't normally do that with the show beer, but given the big news and given the fact that this kind of blends in with your a, shirt in the background yes, there, and given the fact this is a seasonal that has just come back into season, uh, the Dogfish Head, just to show how uh, you know wacky these guys yes. can be. Uh, this is Dragons and Yum Yums, Dragons which is and Yum inspired Yum. by a line from a Flaming Lips song. Mm-hmm. At least the title is and. Uh, it's really good. I'm gonna I'm gonna this take is, that off the beer can. This for a is a I delicious to, beer. I mean, not that again, not that fix, we're reviewing it. We've done that already. But uh, I have to fix but, my cup, which was when I see this, I grab it. You know, when it comes back. Yes, out this every is year, this so. is outstanding. Well, they have so many fun ones. You know, like mm-hmm. you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, even though I'm not like the IPA guy on the show, I'm a big fan of their 90 minute. I think 
like that's now, just such an outstanding IPA. Between the dogfish head, between the sixty and the ninety and the one twenty, do you like the ninety the best? No. You like the 120. Oh, the 120 is yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely really, amazing. But that being really said, the 120 is, is not really in a direct comparison to the 90. Correct. You know, um, yes. so it's it's kind of its own entity, even though the, it kind of follows that same theme. Mm-hmm. Um, but the 90 Minute, I think, is literally one of it, the absolute best in class IPAs out mm-hmm. there. I mean, it's up there with with the uh, the Bell's Two Hearted Ale. It's up there with uh, the, the some of the Stone. I mean, just mm-hmm. absolute classics. Absolutely. It's, it's an outstanding beer. It's one of the few IPAs I'll just buy a six pack of. And I will say that um, there's been some very good. I tried one of the Sam Adams. Um, juicy IPAs that they came out with last summer, I believe it was last spring or summer. I thought it was as good as anything that the smaller, super innovative breweries had come out mm-hmm. with uh, along those lines. I mean, these guys really know, really still do know how to make beer. Well, and- you know, it's it's funny about Dogfish Head is is they don't do normal really. Mm-hmm. Uh, the nor- the most normal thing that they've done is uh, they had a session ale that was a little off center. They had uh-huh. a sequench ale, mm-hmm. which was kind of a salty sour. I liked. Thing. I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. It was. A, I mean, they just they just do so many things, and I absolutely love that about this company. Well, I uh, I it was about the time we were wrapping up the show last Thursday that uh, the merger happened. It's a three hundred million dollar cash and stock transaction, and it takes two of the nation's top fifteen craft brewers and puts them together. They say to better take on competition from big beer and a crowded craft beer landscape that'll put pressure on the smaller players' sales. What I love about this for Sam Adams is I think it makes them cooler. Yeah. You know, makes them maybe a little more relevant in this world of what have you brewed for me lately, right? Yeah. And I think for Dogfish Head, what it does is it's going to give them a chance to get into Maybe the coolers at your local TimeWise convenience store and places like that, where you can walk in and see, you know, instead of just the AB owned craftish yeah. beers, maybe you would actually see. I mean, can you can you imagine stopping to get gas, walking in to the store, coming out with a six pack or a four pack of the uh, ninety minute? Yeah, I mean that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. So you know, um, one of the ones you know, it, it brings me back to one of the. Beers that we uh, we reviewed last year was the Sam Seventy Six. Oh, that was a great beer. I too, have it? actually bought many six packs of that. Yeah. That is such a good we, light, easy drinking. And we talked about it as a great uh, sort of like first on the scene. Yeah. For this new trend of just lighter craft beers, right. sessionable craft beers. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so anyway, excited about this. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, how this potentially strengthens both companies because I love both companies and I love what they do. And well, let's just face it, beer makes me happy. Beer good. Beer good. Um, also coming up on the show today, uh, we are going to have another installment of our um, uh, Smoking and Toasting Recommended Shops. Uh, That's going to be fun. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be welcoming Cliff. Uh, from Plano, Texas, onto the show today. That's uh, going to be pretty awesome. As I recommended, uh, he doesn't sound like he's from Plano, Texas, by the way, <laughs> but uh, but he is. He's from Plano, Texas, and we'll we'll talk with him. We'll talk with him about that. Uh, thanks to our special guest last week, uh, the Party Boy Evan Camp from uh, uh, Eureka Heights Brewing, who brought some great beers. Oh my God! Oh, he was a blast and he too. Was a lot of fun. And uh, we also want to point out, by the way, that there's two big things to celebrate this week, and I think we should maybe have drinks on the show and celebrate these things. Okay. One is that this week is craft beer week. Mm, in I the love United that. States of America. So oddly enough, we to, are drinking craft beer yeah, right now. Oddly enough, and I may need a little more of that in a moment. <laughs> um and then Saturday is World Whiskey Day. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm thinking you can get behind both of these celebrations. I'm, I'm a fan of whiskey. You know where we're <laughs> going to be Saturday, right? Yes, I do, and that's uh, something that we'll uh, you know we'll be able to have fun with for next week's show uh, because we're going to be on a paddle boat in the Galveston Harbor. Not one we paddle ourselves, but Correct. we count with the big paddle yes. wheels. We'll we'll be smoking cigars, not paddling. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the folks at EP Carrillo have invited us on a little cigar cruise. And uh, our good and friend, Maduro's uh, cigar and Maduro's lounge, Maduro's cigar yeah. lounge, yeah. And our good friend Alan Denny, who nobody cares about, that guy's uh, awesome. I love. We'll be guy. there, and uh, so will uh, some of the representatives from EP Carrillo. So that's going to be. We're so looking awesome. very forward to yeah. uh, uh, getting to sit down, talk uh, talk cigars a little bit, and uh, then bring you that as a part of next week's show, which that's should be awesome. Going to be an absolute yep. blast. 
So we'll be looking forward to that, uh, to bringing you that in show number 140, uh, which will happen to, uh, happen next week. So crazy week. There's so many crazy things going on. I say that a lot. It always feels that way whenever we get to sit down here and, and kind of like go, okay, let's let's talk cigars. Let's have a beer. Let's maybe have a little tequila, which we'll do later on in the show. Uh, but uh, tell me about your weekend. Did you smoke anything interesting this week? Well, you know, uh, I did. I did my normal uh, thing where I got up this morning. I made breakfast tacos that didn't have anything breakfasty in them, but they were tacos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love the that idea. Might be a, that might be a Texas thing more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Breakfast tacos are amazing, by the way. Mm-hmm. Or in my case, I didn't actually have breakfast tacos. I had tacos for breakfast, but, but it works close for enough, me. right? Yeah, works for me. Uh, I went by uh, Casa de Monte Cristo just for fun. Um, I picked out uh, the first cigar that I saw, actually. Really? Yeah, it was the right side. I got there a little bit late, so I wanted a smaller cigar so I'd have time to do that mm-hmm, and get the mm-hmm. pictures over to Adam so we could get all this uh, stuff done. So I picked out a Henry Clay Warhawk. It was right in front of oh, me. Oh, nice. And I hadn't had one before. Um, it, this was a Corona. It was a five and a half by 44. Uh, I nice. Haven't, I haven't had a Henry Clay in a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, same here. Like I remember Henry Clay. Henry Clay from years ago, but I don't I don't know the last time I picked one up, and I thought, mm-hmm. well, you know what? Why not? Uh, it's very not the kind of cigar that I immediately grab. First off, it was a very light brown wrapper. Um, it was uh, mostly smooth on the outside with some veins, very firm, like almost you wonder if it's going to draw right kind of firm. Right, right. Uh, I used a punch uh, on it. It had a medium draw. Um, the uh, pre-light sniff on this had a lot of hay and earth, a little bit of cinnamon and creaminess to it that was... All coming through the nose. It was really interesting. I like the way it smelled a lot. It's like you know that 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 classic humidor smell when you walk yeah. in the humidor. It just owned that. You know? I love it. I love it. Um, the pre light. Uh, uh, let's see. I used a punch, medium draw. It had kind of the pre light draw was kind of creamy, a little hay, uh, very tobaccoy, and a little fruitiness to it, kind of almost mm-hmm. on a little twang on the back of it. That was interesting. Uh, that never actually developed. The fruit part never really developed, but. Um, uh, the initial light was, uh, again, that creaminess just came right through. It had light pepper and cappuccino flavors just piling up Sweet. right on the initial light. So it was a really, really pleasant initial light, mm-hmm, nothing mm-hmm. harsh. Uh, the pepper was uh, was there, but it wasn't you know a, a bomb of pepper or anything like that. Uh, the first third of the cigar, uh, pepper and cream up front, earth, traditional tobacco right behind it, light cinnamon or baking spice in the background that was... Really interesting on the it was it was right in the palate and kind of a lingering aftertaste which was really pleasant, um, and uh, it, I mean it had a solid ash and a perfect burn through the first mm. third of it, the second third of this uh, smooth creamy traditional tobacco moved up front cappuccino and toast moved up front. Sweet, I got some of that toastiness. It's really nice and with that creaminess. When you say toast, it, you mean like toasted bread? Like right? toasted bread, yeah, yeah. like toast, like. Really uh, straight up, like, uh, I'm about to put some butter on this. Um, the pepper moved uh, way in the back. It was almost non-existent in the second third of this cigar. Mm-hmm. It was just a just a kiss of it in the end. Solid ash, perfect burn. Nice. This thing, um, the last third of the cigar, creamy cappuccino right up front, toast. Pepper started moving up a little bit, more present. Got a little bit of campfire in there, and then that cinnamon came back. That cinnamon or baking spice came back. Um uh, just to just to finish it off, it left almost a little bit of a creamy sweetness on the aftertaste. I was really enjoying that part of the cigar. So uh, overall, this cigar uh, also uh, solid ash, perfect burn. Like this nice. thing burned great. There's pictures of it. I'm sure you're seeing out there. Um, this was uh, a solid medium cigar. Uh, definitely, I wouldn't say mild to medium. I would say right in, right in the middle of medium by mm-hmm. the by the end of it all. Um, great flavor experience all the way through. I paid $7 for this cigar. Maybe uh, a hair under $7 for this cigar. It's worth every single penny. I gave it a nice. solid five. Solid five. Um, great cigar experience. And I just wish every cigar was constructed like that. You know, yeah, like you, when you get on a really it. good one, it's... it's and, and at a seven dollar price range, you know, you expect it to be pretty good. But mm-hmm. you know, I was just, I was just even more than pleasantly surprised by how well the construction was, how well it lit up. It never loaded up heat wise or anything like that. It was a great cigar. That's how about awesome. you? That's awesome. Well, I smoked an interesting one that actually has been in my humidor for a while since I picked it up at Stogie's a while back. Oh yeah. Uh, it is the Alec Bradley Nico Puro H Town 
Lancetto. This is a the Stogie's H-Town, special. Right. Yeah. right. They produced this specifically for Stogie's. I, I want to say it was a fairly limited release, you know, several thousand boxes or several hundred uh-huh. boxes, uh, like most of the H-Town series. And Stogie's, for those who aren't familiar uh, with it, it's here in Houston where we live. It's one of the larger cigar retailers. Mm-hmm. And they really have embarked on doing their own series of the H Town yes. cigars um, with a lot of different um, cigar manufacturers. They've gone to you know mm-hmm. everybody from Matt Booth to Drew Estate to uh, uh, in this case Alec Bradley. Mm-hmm. I've done cigars for them specifically for their line, and I believe I don't know if they are all Lancetos, but most Jorge of them. Jorge loves are. the Lancetos. Jorge, yeah. Jorge loves I've had a couple Lanceros. of those. Yes. I haven't had that one, but yeah. I've had a couple and, of them. Uh, so this is what I smoke. <coughs> like I said, been sitting in the humidor for a while. Uh, it was uh, nice and. Um, you know, nice and humidified. Uh, this was the second uh, cigar released in the H Town series, by the way. I think Matt Booth did the first one uh, from Room One Hundred and One, uh, and and this this was the second one. Uh, Nico Puro is uh, short for Nicaraguan Puro, mm-hmm. which means that the wrapper, the binder, and the filler all, all come Nicaraguan. from Nicaragua. Yes, uh, it was a dark brown wrapper with, with a little pigtail cap, which I always like those pigtail caps. <laughs> right. Um, some woodiness and hay on the pre light, very pleasant. Uh, once I lit this up, I had a bit or uh, a bit of like coffee or espresso flavor mm-hmm. right off the bat, but there was also a little bit of bitter harshness that popped up hmm. right away, right on the initial, right light. on the initial light. Not enough to keep me from enjoying the cigar, but I definitely found myself hoping that goes away as yeah. I smoked it. You know what I mean? Because it felt like okay, there's some interesting flavors in here. I want to get to them. I don't want them to be overshadowed by that sort of um, uh, that sort of bitterness. That the harshness. As, as far so. as I know, by the way, you can uh, you can temper some of the harshness on a cigar by toasting the end of it before you actually light it. Well, and and I generally will yeah. do that. Like I don't. I don't immediately start puffing, even though I'm using a lighter. And I know you really should use cedar and all that stuff. And I love doing that, but it's not always, you know, feasible for where I am. Um, so I will try to toast the foot as much as I can, yeah. and then take a couple of puffs, and then I kind of toast a little bit more, just to try to make sure I get an even get burn. Get a nice even burn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's uh, so that's how I did when I lit this. And with it being a Lancero, there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of room. Not a lot of room, yeah. so it's easy to get a fairly even. Uh, Lanceros, for those who light. don't know what that is, that is a long skinny cigar. Long skinny cigar. That's absolutely right. So uh, anyway, I, the the harshness was not enough to keep me from enjoying the cigar, but I was hoping to zero in on the other flavors. and uh, So I was hoping it would lessen, and about halfway through the cigar it did. So, depending on whether you're a glass half full or a glass half empty person, <laughs> either the cigar was a bit harsh for half of the cigar, or hey, once I got to the halfway point, it completely went away. Um, uh, so it lessened at least. Or you got harsh blind from look, it. Look, I still had a lot of the cigar to go at that point because it's right. a long cigar. The pepper and espresso were very nice. There was a sweetness that I could make out uh, once that harsher bite lessened uh, a little bit. Construction was pretty good. It burned a little unevenly at first. You may have seen that in the picture already. Uh, but, you know, a tiny bit of touch up and, and it was fine. That wasn't an issue. Uh, overall, I enjoyed it. It actually took quite a bit longer to smoke than I was expecting. Uh, about an hour and a half to smoke that. Wow. Baby. Yeah. Uh, just a little under an hour and a half. Um, at $8, I can't quite give it a five. Ah. Because of that harshness. I'd like to. I'll give it a four and a half because I did really enjoy the cigar. If that harshness had, had not been a part of that first half worth, and I'm actually anxious to try another one to see if that was isolated to the right, stick right. that I had or if it's just something about the construction. And so the you burn, liked it uh, at that price point to pick up another one and try I, it? I, yeah. I mean, uh, a 4.5 is slightly yeah. less than I feel like I got what I paid for, but it's not enough less where I'm going, I'm staying away from that one. Right, right. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll try another one, and if it if it has that you know same sort of harshness, then that probably would be the last one I'd buy because, again, when you're talking about a uh, – you know, you're talking about a seven dollar and eight dollar cigar. You're talking about there's a lot of great options in yeah, that price yeah. in that price range. So, uh, but I enjoyed it, and uh, and obviously we love Jorge and the guys at Stogies, and and you know love supporting their. 
things. I'll I'll try all of those lancetos yes. eventually, you yes. know, uh, because I just think it's uh, a worthwhile thing to do. So, okay, so coming up on the show, we're going to chat with Cliff from the Plano Cigar Warehouse. It is our latest smoking and toasting recommended shop from Plano, Texas, in the Dallas area. And Ian, in our next segment, we're going to um, do something we haven't done in a while on the show. We're going to taste a mystery beer. A mystery beer. Yes. I'm very excited about this because I want this to be something that we taste without, uh, uh, admittedly, I do know what it is, but I want you guys to be able to taste it without knowing what it is and tell me what you think uh, before I tell you what it is. Because it could be that expectations are really high and I want to see if it lives up to it. Or, or it could that be that expectations are really low, really low, and I want to see if it outperforms them. So, Do you ever feel like a crash test dummy? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> but I feel like a crash test dummy that gets to drink beer. So that's, a, that's a, <laughs> you know, when you think about these things, it's a wonderful thing. So uh, mystery beer coming next. Plus, um, we, uh, we will get to this on the program today. Um, the Texas Whiskey Festival winners were announced, and actually we've been trying to get to this for the last two weeks. I will right. get to it today. We want to share those with you because there's some pretty exciting uh, uh, Texas whiskeys that, uh, that nab some pretty cool awards. So awesome. we'll share that with you coming up. You're listening to Smoking and Toasting, and we will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 